In this video, I want to talk about the distance and the displacement in one dimension. These are two concepts which are often confusing. Both of these ideas depend or, or assume two specific points in time, which I call the initial time and the final time. Once you've chosen two points in time, you can define the distance, which is the total length traveled during that time interval, the final time minus the initial time, where the displacement is the difference between the final position and the initial position. I'd call that difference delta x, which is the final position, x subscript f, minus the initial position, which I call x subscript i. But these terms are defined to be the function evaluated at the final time minus the function evaluated at the initial time. Here I have a position function in time, uh, x of t, time is seconds, x is in meters. All right, and here I've chosen two specific points in time. My initial time I'll call zero, my final time I'll call three. Before I jump right in to try to solve this problem, let's look at this with a in a couple different representations. I'm, I'm gonna look at a graphical representation. At t is equal to zero, it's, it's zero. t is equal to one, it goes up to one. t is equal to two, back to zero, so I'll call this one. 0. And t is equal to 3, it looks like it goes down to 1, 2, minus 3. I have this sort of parabola. I know that 1 is in fact the highest value it goes to uh, because I can find the maximum of this function by taking the derivative of it and setting that equal to 0. dx dt is equal to uh, 2 minus 2t equal to zero, so the maximum occurs at t is equal to one, well an extremum, and I, I can see from my graphical representation that it's a maximum. The maximum here is occurs at one. That's really important in this problem if I want to know the total length traveled. Let me do sort of a pictorial representation. When I have some person sort of walking this position function, they start at zero and they head over to one meter, and then they head back to zero, and then they head to minus three. What is the total length traveled during this entire trip? It traveled sort of one meter here, and then back there's another one meter that's two, then there's three, four, five. The total length traveled in this case, or the distance, is equal to five meters. How would we calculate the displacement? This is what I call delta x, or the x final, minus the x initial position. And so this is the x final is the position evaluated at the final time, which is three seconds, minus the position evaluated at the initial time, which is zero. And so at the final time, that's minus three meters minus the position at t is equal to zero, which is zero. So the displacement is negative three meters. This highlights another key difference between displacement and distance. The distance is a scalar. It is the total length traveled. It is uh, represented by a single positive number, while the displacement is a vector. Remember, this is a vector function of time, so evaluating it at two times gives me two vectors. The difference between them is another vector. So the displacement here is a vector. It has a magnitude of three meters, and the negative sign is telling me that that vector is pointing in the negative x-axis. That would give me a vector of magnitude three meters pointing in the negative x-direction. And so that difference, the difference between scalar and vector is a, is a key difference between them. Imagine if you were going, instead of between the initial time zero and three, the initial and final time, initial equals zero, and t final is equal to two. In two seconds, x of two is equal to zero again. So that's essentially the time it took the person to walk to one meter, x equals one, and then back to where the person started from. The total distance traveled would be two meters, while the displacement, which is the difference between the initial and final position, is zero because the initial and final position was the same.